Well, hello and welcome to the first video of Philosophy with Gaming. Today's topic, we're going to start off small, light, because this is the first episode for me, and I have no idea how easy it is going to be to talk about philosophy while uh, trying to kill people in this game. But yeah, I think today's first topic, I'm going to start off a bit light with existentialism. I'm a particular fan of Sartre. And, uh, yeah, see what happens. Let's see how this goes. Um. Yeah, I want that. And I need to get the mana. This. Okay. So. When it comes to existentialism, I'm of the opinion that you should kind of first look at Nietzsche. Now, I know a lot of people tend to mistake him for endorsing uh, nihilism, because uh, I kind of I kind of look at nihilism as existentialism that's half baked, and people fall into that kind of uh, fallacious uh, thinking. My, my issue with it is, if you're assuming that nothing has value, I mean, one, you're uh, you're kind of assuming that there's no objective world to draw value from. And then secondly, there's the whole... So, when you assume that there is no value period, you're kind of disavowing that there's existence in general, to a degree. And I kind of find that problematic. Um, so, as I was saying, Nietzsche is usually misunderstood as endorsing this when he's actually pretty much cautioning against it. Also pretty good for, for, uh, naturalism. Yeah. <laughs> that was beautiful. Okay. So, when it comes to existentialism, I usually... So, I'm an American pragmatist. Uh... It's usually more important to me to, to draw, to, 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 uh, suss out the motive of people. Because, uh, you know, whether or not God does exist, it doesn't change that people do things. That, you know, uh, I live! <laughs> so... What was I saying? See, that's the problem with this. It's going to be hard, because, like, the minute you try to do something, it's going to... And draw your noodle. What you're thinking about? Well, okay. cool. As an American pragmatist, utilitarian, what makes people happy is really important. I think that ties really important into existentialism. Now, there might be a bit of a hedonistic uh, point of view on that one. I think for a lot of people, when they're thinking of existentialism, because I think they they often mistake. Seeking pleasure with uh, the same thing as seeking meaning, and I believe that's a bit problematic. Like, I can definitely think of times in my early 20s when I was, I was going down that route by drinking. Talking about studying philosophy while I'm drinking, pursuing truth, but the truth of the matter is, uh, I'm sort of mistaking the vice for the value, so it's you know what I mean? It's not like there's any value that's going to be gotten out of the bottle itself. So. That's the suffering with it. <laughs> So when it comes to existentialism, it's very important to me to consider music. Uh, a lot of people want to save the world, but uh, that doesn't... Yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of people want to save the world, but that... It's sort of like praying. And they, they, want, to, they want to pray, and it... And it, how do you say... They think that'll solve the problem, as opposed to actually going out to the place and doing something. Directly giving people help. It's, uh, it's not ideal. Oh, come on, man. Yeah. I'm out of mana. No, I need to die. So, when it comes to determining the existential value of your life, like if you draw the conclusion that there is no 
no objective meaning, but you're not going to go so far as to say that, like, disavowing existence and becoming, like, a solipsis. It's very easy to go from nihilism to solipsis. Thinking that you're the only thing in the world that exists who matters. It's just not the case. Not everything comes from something else. We didn't just, like, manifest the reality. Naturalistically, we came from our parents. There was a... There was causes before our primary cause when we first existed. So it's sort of like... Other things exist. I don't, you may not be able to define them very easily, but well... The truth is, they still exist. Kind of like... Yeah, got it. You can't really be like nothing exists. You can't be nihilist to the point that nothing exists. You, you kind of have to accept that even if there is no meaning, there, there's still a reality granted to base on thought. You got one that's independent. So, when it comes to existentialism, or are you going down that rabbit hole of nihilism and thinking your life doesn't matter? Truth is, you can determine that value. But you do have to recognize that the value is coming from something, even if you're the one determining it, because you're basing all your views off something, somewhere, in some ethical framework that even if you determined was based off maybe you can't. You know, uh, there's a whole bunch of ways you can go about doing it. Maybe you just really have to push it. I don't know. I don't know. You people are going to be good independent of their, their rationale, if you should be found. So that's kind of the neat thing. With, that's why I like being call it American existentialist. It's it's important for it to make you happy. For, the, for you to find the meaning in your life that to make you happy. But it's also important that it be functional. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, I missed it. Die! 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 Oh, I lagged. I don't like that. I lagged. Ah, <laughs> come on, it's not bad. Three to one. Shut down. And I mean functional. That okay. So when you, when it comes to existentialism, it's also very easy for people to begin to focus on themselves. Um, like let's say that you're a humanitarian. Some people may get lost in doing good not for others but for their own sake. So there is a bit of like intentions in which you. When it comes to determining value, it's also important to determine how you want to exit the value of the real world. Because, you know, this, this stuff's all, like, nice to think about, but, you know, it's got to have some kind of, some sort of practice, practicality to it, you know? You can't exercise it in life. I'm not sure it's worth pursuing. Yeah, I don't want him dead. Darn. <laughs> funny thing with, with nihilism. I, I don't know why Americans are so... I think of the Fight Club. That movie's nihilism. I, I think in our culture, we really just place so much uh, monetary value on things. Like a sort of uh, monetary existentialism. Oh. <laughs> I ran the wrong way. Woo! Oh, yes. That was lucky. <laughs> oh, they surrendered. See, I, I wouldn't have surrendered if I was if I was an existentialist. I would say we should keep we should keep pushing on, even if even if we're losing, even if there's no point, we can still get a glorious experience out of it. And maybe I've had a few more minutes to talk about existentialism. <laughs> Well, that was having the first test of it. Ooh, let's see what the score was. Let's see what, objectively speaking, people thought of the experience. Uh, what else did we get, like, on game? Oh, I want to give him my honor. <gasps> Lagging? What's going on? Okay, I guess Caitlyn. <laughs> Why? Okay, so subjectively, 
We didn't do good. We got no votes. But objectively, we were told we did quite well. Okay. Cool. That was a good game. So I want to thank you guys for joining me. And that was the first episode on existentialism while gaming. Awesome. Look forward to seeing you guys again.